Hey YouTube, this is Justin, aka Demonic Sweaters, your guide in DIY multimedia production. And today I'm here at my rehearsal studio, finally. And um, what I'm going to be doing, as I mentioned in another video, and I apologize for the background noise, I have the AC running just to cool the place down a bit before I start recording. Um, let me turn the camera around so I can show you. Um, I'm going to be using some very cheap microphones for recording drums. Um, one of them is this Sunhua mic that I did a review on a while ago. I'm using it as an overhead here on the right of the kit, or drummer right. And the other overhead is the infamous or famous BM800, which comes in many name brands. You can buy these on Amazon for about $15. The Sunhua is $33, so it's a little bit more expensive. And on the bass drum, I have, this one's probably the most expensive mic that I'm using, and it's still not very expensive. It's a CAD uh, KMB412. Uh, and these, I think, run for about $45, $50, something like that. But it's a great sounding kick drum mic. I really like it. And on the snare, <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm going to end up really using this one or not. I'm going to try it. But it's the Pile. Uh, PDM IK1, which I also used in my um, four track, my Tascam Porta O2 video. And, uh, you know, I thought they were horrible before, but actually, after doing that video, I really didn't think it sounded that bad. So I thought I'd give it a shot on the snare drum. And, uh, of course, the drum set here is my Sun Drums. If you watch the Sun Drum series, uh, this is the drum set that I made mostly from parts found in the trash. And if you're interested in seeing how this was all made, uh, you can definitely check out that series. I'm not doing any Tom mics. I was going to, but then when I got here and I set it all up, these Toms are so insanely loud because they're all single-headed concert Toms, at least how I have them set up right now, that I really don't think I'm going to need them. And also, I don't really have enough channels uh, to do Tom mics. Um, I can. What I was going to do is run all the Toms through a mixer and just have them on a single channel, but uh, I don't know if it's really worth all the trouble to do that. So I think they're going to sound fine with just the overheads. And we'll see how these mics do. Um, the BM800 I've used as an overhead before, and it actually sounds pretty good. Um, it's a little hot. That's my only complaint with it. But I think it should be okay. I have it pretty high. And uh, this one, the Sunhua, let me just straighten it out there a bit. Um, I'm excited to hear how this one sounds. I think it's going to be really nice. Um, I'm hoping, I put it on the right because these are where the bigger toms are. I've got a 13, 14, 15, and 16 on this side, and this one seems to have more low end to it than the uh, the BM800 does. So I'm hoping that'll that'll pick up some on the uh, the toms there. And then on the snare, I forgot to mention. Let me go back over there. You'll notice that I have the snare mic'd. Uh, it's kind of like in the middle of the snare shell, and this is a technique I picked up a while back. Um, if you want to get a more snary sound, like to actually pick up the snare wires, uh, and you don't have enough channels to mic the bottom of the snare, this is a great way to do it. Um, and I also think this is going to help pick up that first rack tom, which is going to be the quietest of the bunch uh, on the rest of the kit. So it'll be good to have that over there to give a little bit more volume on that first rack tom. And uh, so what I'm going to do, I need to set up all the cables and set up my interface and my laptop and all that shit still. So I'm going to do that first and then I'll check back with you. All right, well, one good thing to know is the Sunhua microphone does seem to function uh, with regular old phantom power, which is what I suspected. And uh, you can see that's, it's actually the one on number four right here. And let me hit some drums and you can see it. Uh, basically, the interface I'm using is this Alesis IO4, and I've had this thing forever. It has four XLR inputs, uh, which is really nice. It's portable, and it has four uh, balanced inputs, which is rare. I'm going to start getting some levels and see how these drums sound and whether or not I'm going to be able to use this uh, microphone on the snare drum. I'll find that out here in a little bit. All right, so right away I noticed this just completely horrific buzz coming from channel two, which is where that pile microphone is plugged into. So I'm actually going to switch that out. And uh, I'm going to switch it out with a slightly better pile, <laughs> one that I've used before. And yep, that took care of it. Um, this one is actually the pile PDMIC78. And these are quite uh, good, actually. They're like an SM57 copy. 
And I have a couple of these, and they sound really nice. A lot of people use these on YouTube. You'll see a lot of videos about them. But they look nearly identical to real SM57. But they cost like 20 bucks, I think, or $25. They're not very expensive. And uh, they sound good. So I'm keeping it in that same position, and now I'm going to get some levels. So now I'm back here at my apartment and did a little bit of mixing on some of these drum tracks. Uh, what I started getting the levels with was actually um, Q Tractor, but that was before I did my Q Tractor uh, tutorial and before I fixed my click problem. So I was having some trouble uh, recording in Q Tractor at the studio that day. That was like a few days ago. So I ended up recording a little bit in our door, and that one went fine. And uh, I actually think the the uh, drum sound came out really good. Uh, and I'm, I'll just play it back for you so you can hear it yourself. I'll show you what I did as far as EQs and stuff uh, first. Um, well, actually, no. I'll go ahead and play it, and then I'll show you what I did as far as EQs. But let me go back into the editor here in our door, and let's just go ahead and listen. I just realized you're probably picking up my mic as well. So let me mute that real quick. And then I will play it again. Okay. Okay, so hopefully you can hear me again. I think you should be able to. But uh, yeah, um, as I thought, the toms came out plenty loud enough with just the overheads because those toms are very loud on that drum set. And uh, I think they sound really good. You know, I would totally use this. And there's barely any mixing done on here. I'll show you exactly what I did so far. Not that you need to do a lot on drums. If they're tuned good and you have the mic set up in good places, then you usually don't need to do that much. All I really did here was just some EQ on each channel. And then I created a drum bus uh, for just the overheads. And then I, I put the overheads into a compressor. And I used the Invada compressor here. 
And uh, that's all. I mean, for the EQ, if you want to take a look at this, on the kick drum, I just roll off uh, like kind of a little bit of the super lows, like 20 uh, hertz, and then I give it a little bit of a boost at 80 hertz, and then I give another little cut at 160 hertz, and a little boost at around you know 2,000 hertz, or yeah, 2,000 hertz, and you know just to give it a little bit of attack, and then to give it like the nice low end, but not the super low end that you can't really hear that just makes your mix sound fucked up. So, uh, excuse my French, but um, let me play this back and I'll solo some channels so you can hear these uh, soloed. So here's the kick. And that is the CAD uh, KBM 412. And I was looking actually on Amazon. I don't think they make this particular microphone anymore. It is a few years old. But I found a newer version of a CAD. I think it's just called the K12 or something like that. And I, I posted a link to that one down below instead of the, the one that I have because I just couldn't find it anymore. Now let's, let's check out some snare drum. And that is that pile uh, PDM set or PDMIC or M, whatever it is, MIK78, something like that. That's that one with the side snare drum miking technique. And you notice how you do actually hear a little bit of the snariness to it. It's not like if you put a microphone right on the top of the snare drum head, sometimes you get a lot of like uh, ringiness from the head. And so that's also another good way to avoid that. The only problem I will say with the side miking is you tend to get more bleed of other uh, drums, partic particularly hi-hats and as you can hear the cowbell there. But it's really okay in this particular instance. It doesn't really mess anything up. Okay, now this is the BM800. Let me pan center for that. And that's, you know, really surprisingly balanced for where that microphone was. And even just that, I mean, that alone is usable. You can EQ that and make that sound pretty good in a mix. Okay, now let's move on to the Sun Hua. Pan it center as well. And same with the Sun Hua. And like I said, it has a little bit more low end, uh, which I like. Since I, especially I was using it on just uh, or not miking the toms, I think that's really good. Now let's hear them all again. And I did put a little EQ on the overheads as well. I forgot to show you that. Nothing major. I just know that room pretty well, and I know which frequencies tend to be a little too hot, so I try to pull those out. It's a little bit of a... I'm not sure what that is on the bass drum. I think that might have been maybe the, the mic hitting the, the hole on the kick drum, if you hear that little slap back. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. But still in a mix with music, you probably wouldn't even notice that. Kind of some disco sounds going on there. <laughs> So my conclusion, I mean, 
they sound good to me. I mean, it's not like, you know, they're not like Neumanns or like, you know, like having like really expensive microphones on your drums, which of course would probably sound better. But I do think that they are just as good as your kind of mid-range, uh, middle-of-the-road microphones like Behringer's and Nadies and things like that that you you pretty much pay like two or three times the cost uh, as all of these microphones that I'm using, with the exception of the CAD. Like I said, that is the most expensive one. But uh, I actually haven't looked for uh, to see if there's any Chinese kick drum mics. I should because uh, I'd be interested in trying one. I've had that CAD for a long time, but... Um, I don't really have any other kick drum mics at the moment. I used to have an EV, but it eventually broke. And, uh, so all I ended up having was the CAD. And, um, so yeah, I should check, look into that and see if there is anything. And if there is, I'll definitely do a video on it. But, uh, hopefully you found this, uh, helpful and educational or just entertaining. And, uh, if you did, be sure to click like. And, uh, if you're interested in any of these mics at all, all the links are posted down below in the description. And you can buy them there. That'll help me out if you just, or if you just click the link and buy anything uh, from Amazon after clicking the link, that'll also help me out to continue making these videos. Um, so yeah, that's all for today. And I'll be back probably tomorrow with some other video. I'm not really sure what I'm going to be doing yet, but it'll be something. So have a good day, everybody. Later.